Okay, so let's continue on uh, now with the uh, chapter on census, a really uh, big, uh, important, and uh, really uh, interesting uh, chapter. All right, so we'll be talking about sense organs. And first we have a uh, stimulus, some force, some type of energy uh, from the uh, exterior or the interior. But most of this chapter is not going to be the internal receptors, but the receptors that allow us to, uh, to get information from our surroundings. And so a sensation, any conscious or unconscious awareness of a stimulus, remember any of this force from outside, the stimulus, has to be transductive. That is, it has to be converted into action potential. Because remember, this information is going into your brain, and again, your brain just sees action potential. So that's so we'll talk. We'll be talking a lot in this chapter uh, about the transduction effects, how we uh, we convert different uh, stimulus modalities into um, action potential. So that's what modality means. What stimulus are we talking about? Is it sound? Is it light? Is it mechanical distortion of a membrane? What is it? Is it uh, uh, it could be any of these. And where is it located? So your brain needs to know what kind of stimulus it is and where it's located. And also, the intensity. How strong of a stimulus it, it, uh, is it? And also, its duration. Uh, how long does it last? So your brain needs all that uh, information. Okay, so, so we can see sensory uh, sense receptors as transducers. Uh, and the production of a, a receptor potential. Whatever it is, what the force is, the stimulus is, it's going to open up um, uh, gated ion channels, and um, this is going to cause a graded potential uh, in their uh, receptor uh, called the receptor potential. And this is going to go to a, uh, into a, um, um, an area like a uh, trigger zone or where we have voltage-gated action, uh, voltage-gated ion channels, and it's going to generate an action potential along a sensory neuron. Um, and the size of receptor potential dictates the frequency of action potential. The larger the stimulus, the the greater the receptor potential, and the greater uh, frequency of action potentials are stimulated in the uh, sensory neuron. Then you also have to talk about uh, receptive fields, um, which gives you location info. And smaller fields, more precise information. Uh, well, oh, I've been giving you a slide number. This is slide four. And this is something we've actually already covered when we talked about the sensory homunculus uh, in the postcentral gyrus, why the uh, face and, and uh, hands are overrepresented because there's much smaller receptive fields in your hand, as you can see uh, to the left here, versus your back, much larger receptive field. So it's a uh, uh, less precise, uh, precise sensation when you have a larger receptive field. Okay, remember also, this is slide um, five now, that we know that uh, how does your brain figure out what the modality of a stimulus is is label lines into brain. All the different uh, um, sensor information go to different areas in the brain, and that's how your brain figures it out. And we can also talk about duration info, not something we haven't talked about before, when we get that what's called phasic and tonic receptors. Tonic receptors are on all the time. They're, they're constant, and it doesn't matter how whether the stimulus changes or not, they're, they're always there. And, and uh, um, two of the really good examples of tonic receptors are equilibrium uh, receptors. You're always sort of balanced. And proprioception, where your limbs are in, in space. Doesn't matter whether you hold out your arm out the same, at the same distance at the same place for hours at a time. Those proprioceptives, uh, proprioceptives are always on. Versus what are called phasic receptors. And that is, uh, they adapt. 
to a constant intensity of stimulus. So um, if, the, if the stimulus doesn't change, the, uh, the sensation will actually decrease and be gone. Um, and this is what we talked about before, again, back, getting back to the brain. What is your brain most interested in? Is sensory information that's changing. Uh, a lot of times if it's not changing, it's not important. So we can look at uh, uh, touch, vision, olfaction, and I think maybe even audition, although I'm not sure about that one, whether, that, whether those, uh, those uh, receptors adapt. Here's uh, um, slide uh, six, which uh, shows you in a graphic form a tonic receptors that the stimulus with continued exposure, sensitivity stimulus remains constant, doesn't matter. Versus phasic, you first feel the response, and if it doesn't change, it gets less and less and less with time, and after all, you won't even uh, detect it anymore. Uh, this is great for, uh, for example, if you walk in, uh, Chemoreceptors, smell is very uh, phasic, those recept receptors. So you walk into a room with a, re a real stench, really, really uh, bad smell in a room. If the, the, if the bad smell doesn't get worse, then after just a few minutes, you won't smell it anymore. You won't even detect it. Uh, unfortunately, that's true for good odors as well. It doesn't matter. Slide 7 deals with the classification receptor. Uh, you, can st you can classify them with di in different ways. One by stimulus modality is the thermoreceptor, the, uh, which is temperature. A photoreceptor is light. Nociceptors are pain receptors. Uh, and they're generally often just bare nerve endings. Chemoreceptors uh, detect chemicals, and mechano or baroreceptors detect mechanical distortion of the membrane. You can also classify them as the origin of a stimulus. Exteroreceptors, uh, they detect um, a stimuli from outside your body. Versus interoreceptors, which detect things inside your body. Uh, and most of us are talking about exteroreceptors. And then there's proprioceptors, which is a really special type of interoreceptors that are uh, muscle spindle fibers and Golgi tendon organs that tell your brain, particularly your cerebellum, uh, where your uh, body parts are in space. And then there's by distribution of receptors. Where are these receptors located? Um, and there's two general types, the general or somesthetic senses, and that's all over your entire body, versus the special receptors or special senses. And those are the senses that are clustered around your, um, your head. Uh, these, these being taste, smell, uh, vision, and audition. Whereas general would be things like touch and pain. And any receptor can be classified according to each of those three criteria. Receptor distribution, where are the receptors located? Stimulus origin, does it come from outside from the body or inside? or stimulus modality, uh, what is the, the actual uh, uh, modality of the, uh, of the stimulus. So we're going to start, here's chapter, uh, chapter uh, slide nine on the general senses. Uh, and uh, there's lots of different receptor types. Because if you put them in two, two categories, what's called encapsulated um, uh, receptors, and this is this is all for touch. This is all for touch, and, and light pressure and heart pressure, and then there's capsulated ones. There's a bunch of names for them. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna give you an example later on of one called a Pacinian corpuscle, but you're not gonna need to know how the other ones work. But there's two general types of touch receptors, and then we're gonna talk about projection pathways. And here we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the spinal cord. Uh, and there is something things we need to know about the spinal cord, uh, particularly the uh, um, called the ascending pathways are sensory, and there's uh, uh, there's always three. Um, there's usually, not always. There's usually three uh, sensory nerves involved in each sensory pathway: the ascending pathways, 
for the first order, the second order, and the third order neuron. And the first um, sense we're really going to look at, like I said, is, is touch and pain. And pain is really closely related to touch. Remember, those are called nociceptors. And we can talk about referred pain, pain that comes from a different area than, than what the area that's injured, and somatic and visceral pain. And somatic pain is pain you're, uh, from the outside of your body. Uh, and visceral pain is from your internal organs. And we're mostly going to talk about uh, somatic pain.